Ever wondered what happens when central banks decide to shrink the money supply? It's called quantitative tightening, but what does it really mean? Well, it's a fascinating monetary policy tool that central banks employ. Like a financial puppet master, they pull the strings, subtly controlling the flow of money in the economy. This monetary maneuver is no magic trick, though it can seem mysterious to many. So let's unravel this enigma together. Stick around as we dive deep into the world of quantitative tightening. So, what exactly is quantitative tightening? Well, it's not as complex as it sounds. Let's break it down. Picture the economy as a giant engine. The fuel for this engine is money. To keep the engine running smoothly, central banks like the Federal Reserve in the United States or the European Central Bank in Europe control the amount of money in circulation. They are like the mechanics of this massive engine. Now when the economy is sluggish or facing a downturn, the central banks pump more money into the system. This process, known as quantitative easing, is like stepping on the gas. It boosts economic activity as more money means more spending, which in turn leads to more production. However, there is a flip side to this. When the economy is running too hot, with high inflation and overinvestment, central banks need to cool things down. This is where quantitative tightening comes in. It's essentially the opposite of quantitative easing. The central banks reduce the amount of money in the system by selling off assets, typically government bonds, that they previously bought during the quantitative easing phase. By selling these assets back into the market, they effectively take back the money they had previously released, reducing the overall money supply. This slows down spending and investment, cooling down the overheated economy. It's like hitting the brakes on our giant economic engine. But why do central banks need to do this? Well, too much money chasing too few goods can lead to inflation, where the prices of goods and services rise. If left unchecked, this can spiral into hyperinflation, where prices skyrocket out of control. By tightening the money supply, central banks aim to keep inflation in check and maintain the stability of the economy. So, in a nutshell, quantitative tightening is the reverse of quantitative easing, it's like hitting the brakes on the economy. You might be wondering what happens when a central bank decides to tighten the money supply. Well, let's dive into it. The impact of quantitative tightening or QT is quite the opposite of quantitative easing, which is when a central bank injects money into the economy. When a central bank decides to tighten the money supply, it sells off its assets, often government bonds, to the market. This action reduces the amount of money circulating within the economy. Now, you might be thinking, okay, but how does this affect me? Well, let's talk about interest rates. When the central bank sells off its assets, there is a decrease in the amount of money in the economy. This decrease can lead to higher interest rates. You see, when there's less money available, it becomes more expensive to borrow. So, if you're planning on taking out a loan for a car or a house, you might end up paying more in interest. But the impact of QT doesn't stop there. It also affects inflation. Remember, inflation is the rate at which the general level of prices for goods and services is rising. When there is less money in circulation, there is less spending. And when there is less spending, there is less demand. This reduced demand can lead to a slowdown in inflation. Let's look at it this way. Imagine you're at an auction, and there's less money among the bidders. The price of the item being auctioned off is likely to go down, right? The same principle applies to the economy. When there's less money in circulation, prices are likely to go down, or at least not rise as quickly. However, it's important to note that while QT can help slow inflation and stabilize the economy, it can also lead to slower economic growth. That's because less money in the economy can mean less investment and less spending, which are key drivers of economic growth. As you can see, quantitative tightening can have significant effects on our economy and our daily lives. Now that we've covered the basics, let's look at how quantitative tightening works in the real world. Think of an economy as an engine. When the engine is running hot with high inflation and overspending, it's like a car going at full speed. To slow it down and prevent overheating, the central bank might decide to apply the brakes by implementing quantitative tightening. This is done by reducing the money supply effectively making money more expensive to borrow, and therefore, less abundant. Let's consider a hypothetical country, we'll call it economia. In economia, inflation rates are rising fast. The prices of goods and services are increasing, and people are spending money like there's no tomorrow. The central bank of economia decides it's time to intervene to prevent the economy from overheating. They opt for quantitative tightening. 
By selling off government bonds, the central bank of Economia is effectively taking money out of circulation. The more bonds they sell, the less money there is available in the economy. This makes borrowing more expensive and less attractive, which in turn, slows down spending. As a result, people and businesses in Economia start to spend less. They're more cautious with their money because borrowing is now more expensive. This change in behavior cools down the economy, bringing inflation rates back to a more manageable level. However, it's important to note that this is not an instant process. It's more like turning a ship it takes time to see the effects. Initially the impact of quantitative tightening might not be obvious, but over time as borrowing costs rise and spending slows, the economy begins to cool down, and inflation rates start to stabilize. This is just one example of how quantitative tightening can work in practice. Different countries might use different methods, but the overarching aim remains the same. To slow down an economy that's running too hot, and to keep inflation in check. These examples provide a glimpse into the powerful effects of quantitative tightening on an economy. Like any economic policy, quantitative tightening has its advantages and disadvantages. Let's start with the pros. A primary advantage of quantitative tightening is that it can help keep inflation in check. When there's too much money floating around in an economy, prices can start to rise potentially leading to inflation. By reducing the money supply, central banks can cool off an overheating economy and keep inflation at bay. Quantitative tightening can also be seen as a way to normalize monetary policy after periods of quantitative easing. By selling off assets and sucking money out of the economy, central banks can help bring interest rates back up to more traditional levels which can be beneficial for savers and investors who rely on interest income. But what about the cons? Well, one potential disadvantage is that quantitative tightening can lead to higher borrowing costs. As central banks sell off assets, this can push up interest rates, making it more expensive for businesses and consumers to borrow money. This could slow down economic activity and potentially lead to a recession if not managed carefully. Another potential drawback is that it can cause financial market volatility, when central banks announce plans to tighten monetary policy, this can spook investors and cause stock prices to fall. This was seen in late 2018, when the US Federal Reserve announced plans to continue its program of quantitative tightening, leading to a sharp drop in stock prices. Finally, there's the risk that quantitative tightening might not work as intended. It's a relatively new tool, and central banks are still figuring out how best to use it. If they tighten too quickly or too much, they could inadvertently trigger a financial crisis. In conclusion, central banks might choose to use quantitative tightening despite these potential risks because they believe the benefits outweigh the drawbacks. They might see it as the lesser of two evils, compared to the risk of runaway inflation or an overheated economy. So, while quantitative tightening can be a useful tool it's not without its risks and challenges. Now that we've explored the world of quantitative tightening, let's summarize what we've learned. We began our journey by understanding the basic concept of quantitative tightening. This is a monetary policy where central banks reduce the amount of money in circulation, often to control inflation and stabilize the economy. It's like taking the punch bowl away just when the party is getting started. Then, we delved into the impact of this policy, observing how it can affect various aspects of the economy from interest rates to investment behaviors. Remember, while it can cool down an overheating economy, it may also slow economic growth if not managed carefully. We also examined real-world examples of quantitative tightening. These examples illustrated how different countries have used this tool to maintain economic stability and also highlighted the challenges they faced during the process. It's not a one-size-fits-all solution, but a tool to be used with caution and precision. Lastly, we assessed the pros and cons of quantitative tightening. On one hand, it can help prevent economic bubbles and manage inflation. On the other hand, it can lead to increased borrowing costs and potentially dampen economic growth. And there you have it, a comprehensive overview of quantitative tightening. Thanks for joining us on this journey into the world of economics. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and comment. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to keep up with the latest content.